I'm a little bit troubled by Chris's insistence that humans, all humans are sort of believers at root. We're not knowers. And so thus, there's really nothing qualitatively different, he says, from religious believing than any other type of human believing. And again, I'm not a philosopher. This is probably territory you cover in your first week of your intro to philosophy classes. But I would argue that there's different kinds of belief. And people can have good reasons for what they believe. They can have bad reasons for what they believe or no reasons at all. Um, people can base their beliefs on evidence or no evidence or flawed evidence. People can believe things because they have tested those beliefs, and people can believe things that they don't test at all. Um, and I, I just don't get it. I mean, my belief that I'm losing my hair is simply not the same thing as my belief that my wife is the most beautiful woman in the world or that it was 72 degrees in Los Angeles yesterday. Or I just don't think these are the same kinds of beliefs. And I think that Chris's insistence that religious belief is somehow the exact same as all kinds of human belief is unhelpful and un un unworkable. I mean, if it were true that all belief amounts to the same as an essential thing, there would never be any way to refute a belief as false. I mean, why do people believe they've been abducted by UFOs? Well, that's no different than believing penicillin cures strep throat. No, it's very different. Why do some people believe that Muhammad rode a white horse through the sky? Well, that's no different than some people believing that rubber is derived from latex. I mean, these are very different kinds of beliefs. And I, and I just saying that there's no difference between religious beliefs and other forms of belief, I think, is incorrect. I, I, I could be wrong. And I disagree very much with Chris's notion. And I don't, again, I'm like, why even go there? What, what, is, what, is, the, what is gained? He seems to suggest that a society which tolerates religious freedom is somehow respecting human nature. <sighs> but again, this creates a problem then, because if humans are naturally religious, I would argue they're also naturally secular. And these are both outgrowths of our natural tendencies, to be religious and to be secular. So I would argue that a society which privileges religiosity as natural, again, is some, somehow going to denigrate secularity as unnatural. And I think that's a very bad idea. So I would rather have a society that respects human freedoms, broadly understood, which would include certain religious freedoms, but not privilege religious freedoms as somehow innate to the human condition. Because I, I'm certain if that is the, if that is the uh, tendency, then when Rick Santorum does become president, those of us that are not religious are going to be in real hot water because, hey, we're going against human nature, let alone the grain of the universe. So I guess I, uh, I actually, <laughs> although I've spent my time disagreeing with Chris, um, which is sad because I actually think our work overlaps tremendously. I think we probably agree with more than we disagree with, but I was just troubled by the underlying thrust of this paper, which I thought um, had intrinsic problems. And thanks for listening. And thanks, Chris. <laughs> Thank you.